These four devices are some of the highest rated camera smartphones on the planet. So today we'll be comparing the Xiaomi 13 Ultra, Huawei P60 Pro, Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra and iPhone 14 Pro Max in this extremely detailed camera comparison where we'll be comparing day and night photos and videos. The Xiaomi 13 Ultra packs in a 32 megapixel selfie camera on the front and quad 50 megapixel setup on the back, which includes an ultra wide, a main, a telephoto and a periscope. The main camera is a large large one inch type sensor with variable aperture, but to keep things simple, we'll be sticking to f1.9 in most situations, as well as Leica Vibrant. The Huawei P60 Pro also has different styles, but we'll be sticking to X-Mage Original. The Huawei also has variable aperture for its main 48 megapixel sensor, but we'll be sticking to f1.4 aperture most of the time, as well as auto aperture mode for certain scenes. It also packs in a 48 megapixel periscope, a 13 megapixel ultra wide, and a 13 megapixel ultra wide selfie camera. The Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra houses a 12 megapixel selfie and ultra wide camera, a 10 megapixel telephoto and periscope sensor, and a crazy 200 megapixel main camera. And lastly, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is kitted with a 48 megapixel main camera and three 12 megapixel sensors for the telephoto, ultra wide, and selfie camera. Will the Xiaomi's massive one inch type sensor reign supreme? Will the Huawei's advanced processing set the scene, will the Samsung's 200 megapixel count be a knockout or will the iPhone's consistency stand out? This is Tech Nick and without further ado, let's find out. What's up guys, this is Tech Nick recording a selfie video on four of the most incredible camera smartphones. The Xiaomi is capped at 1080p 60fps selfie video, while the other three can achieve 4K 60fps when using the selfie cam to record video. Let me know your thoughts of their audio quality as well as their video quality when recording with the selfie cams in the comment section down below. The Xiaomi is overexposed when it comes to selfie video, the Samsung has the best natural depth and the Huawei and iPhone offer the best stability. The Huawei lacks portrait selfie video, the Xiaomi's is capped at 1080p, while the Samsung and iPhone both offer 4K portrait video and have the highest detail and best depth of field. When it comes to ultra wide selfie photos, the Xiaomi is once again overexposed, the Huawei has the largest field of view and the Samsung is the most natural and packed with the most detail. Only the Samsung offers an ultra wide selfie portrait mode and has the best edge detection, but the Samsung looks a tad washed out even at 1x while the Huawei provides fantastic tonal range. And the Huawei has the most natural depth of field at 1x portrait mode. Moving on to back cameras, using their respective telephotos without portrait mode enabled, none of them look great, but the iPhone is the cleanest while the Huawei does a decent job of compensating exposure. And when enabling portrait mode at this range, the Huawei no doubt comes out on top. Using portrait mode with their mains sees the Xiaomi come out way too tinted, the Huawei offers the cleanest foreground, while the iPhone the best background. The Samsung has a decent overall balance but suffers in tonal range. With Without portrait mode at 1x, the Samsung fixes up tonal range and once again looks the most balanced while the Xiaomi reduces tint and provides great natural depth thanks to that large sensor. None of them offer much depth using their mains to take a snap of an object, but the Samsung controls white balance the best. However, the Samsung is too overexposed when taking a shot of the same object using its telephoto. The Xiaomi improves white balance, but the Huawei packs in the most detail and offers great natural depth. And only the Huawei offers close-up focusing with its telephoto, which is evidence when taking a shot in terms of detail and color accuracy, but the Xiaomi and iPhone aren't too far off. Moving back to their mains, this time setting them all to their native resolution, they all look incredible. The Xiaomi handles light noise the best, the iPhone has great depth, and while the Samsung should pack in the most detail due to it having 200 megapixels, the Huawei actually provides the most detail. But when cropping in by 400%, the iPhone actually impressed me the most in terms of detail and truly shows off its natural depth effect. When taking a snap of me at their high megapixel counts, the Xiaomi offers great depth due to that large sensor, but the Huawei is absolutely perfect. However, it's a tad too sharp for my liking when cropping in, which has me leaning more toward the Xiaomi. This native shot was actually put up on my YouTube channel community page as a poll, where most of you voted for image B, which is actually the Huawei. Congrats to those who got this right, and I have to agree, it looks the best. The Xiaomi is too saturated, the iPhone is too dim, the Samsung is not far off, but a tad too overexposed, leaving the Huawei as the champ. But when cropping in, the Huawei offers less detail when compared to the rest. The iPhone once again surprised me here in terms of detail, but since Samsung is more 
balanced, it takes the win here. Back to bin shots using their mains, this pick was taken of me walking in order to test out shutter speed to see which keeps moving objects more in focus. The Xiaomi has a mode for this, which is called fast shot, the Huawei does too, known as snapshot, but in all honesty, all of them manage to keep everything in focus with no blur in sight. When taking a macro shot with their ultra wide sensors, the Huawei has the widest field of view, but it looks the worst, and while none of them look great, the Xiaomi is arguably the best. But with this second macro shot, the Samsung no doubt comes out on top. Taking a regular ultra wide shot, the Xiaomi is the only one with a high megapixel count, with the option for pixel binning, which offers a brighter, more balanced shot, but the Huawei actually comes out the most balanced here and has the widest field of view. Taking bin shots on all of their main cameras of the same scene pulls me back to the Huawei in terms of overall balance and fantastic shadow handling, leaving it as the most accurate representation of the scene. The Xiaomi looks the most fun, the Samsung sits between the Huawei and Xiaomi and offers the most detail, while the iPhone is spot on in terms of balance. Using their mains to zoom in by two times, the Xiaomi is the only one here with in-sensor lossless zoom tech and it looks amazing, but the Huawei really isn't far off. Moving on to telephoto zooms, the Huawei's periscope has the highest 3.5 times zoom range and offers the best balance and detail, and while the Huawei offers hybrid zoom at five times, the Xiaomi is the only one with a five times periscope sensor, which provides optical zoom at this level and is no doubt the best in terms of detail here. The Samsung also has a second telephoto sensor, which is also a periscope, just like the Xiaomi, but has even further optical zoom range at 10 times. And while it's arguably the best, it's a tad washed out, leaning me more toward the Xiaomi's 10 times in sensor lossless zoom. But even more toward the Huawei's 10 times hybrid zoom, I mean, look at those trees in the background. The Huawei's processing power is on another level. 15 times is the max zoom for the iPhone and comes out by far the worst of the lot. And at 30 times, the Xiaomi is a bit over sharpened, but packs in the most amount of detail. The same can be said at 50 times digital zoom with the Xiaomi taking the cake. 100 times is the max zoom for the Huawei and Samsung. The Huawei zoom level is higher, but the Samsung looks quite a bit better. And while the Samsung is cleaner than the Xiaomi, I can't believe I'm saying this, but Xiaomi has finally caught up to Samsung at 100 times zoom. But the Xiaomi can go even further at 120x and still retains most of its detail, making it the new high level zoom champion. Moving on to video, all four phones can shoot 4K 60fps optically zoomed telephoto videos and the Xiaomi is the perfect middle ground between the lot. Not to mention it's the only one here that can shoot 8K telephoto video and it looks even more detailed and slightly brighter than before, but does does suffer from stability issues at 8K resolution. The Xiaomi can also shoot 8K video with its main, which is something the Samsung also boasts, but the Samsung is slightly smoother thanks to it being 30fps and looks more balanced overall. They can of course all shoot 4K 60fps main video and while the iPhone is still a step ahead, it's crazy how Androids have finally upped their video recording game. Shooting 4K main video without portrait mode has the iPhone and Huawei looking too sharp, the Samsung too smooth, leaving the Xiaomi as the cleanest, but it does have tonal issues. The Xiaomi lags behind when it comes to portrait video. The Samsung and iPhone are the only ones with 4K portrait video, and it's clear the iPhone takes the crown here. But when shooting telephoto portrait video, the iPhone suffers from bad edge detection, the Samsung is decent, and the Huawei isn't far off the Xiaomi. However, with portrait mode disabled using their telephotos, the iPhone is the most balanced and looks the most natural of the bunch. They can all shoot 1080p slow motion video, the iPhone is limited to 240 FPS, the Xiaomi a whopping 1920 FPS, and the Huawei and Samsung a fantastic 960 FPS, with the Samsung coming out the cleanest. And when it comes to focusing speed, the Xiaomi and Huawei are no doubt the fastest. But when it comes to stability, the Samsung and iPhone come out on top, with the Samsung taking a slight lead, thanks to two times wider OIS this year, as well as adaptive VDIS. But the Xiaomi and Huawei are still extremely stable. The Huawei unfortunately lacks lacks a stability mode, the Xiaomi's steady video mode is capped at 1080p, and the Samsung and iPhone look the best with the highest resolution and FPS stability modes. The Xiaomi, iPhone and Samsung offer the same stability modes with their ultra wides, but the iPhone is the clear winner here. And when using standard stability with their ultra wides, the iPhone once again comes out on top, but the Huawei is 
isn't far off. It's just a pity that Huawei is capped at 30 FPS when it comes to ultra wide video recording. And even though it's capped at 30 FPS, it still looks great. But the iPhone and Samsung come out looking better, with the Xiaomi having the highest field of view here, but struggling to keep things in focus. The Xiaomi is, however, the only one here that can shoot 8K ultra wide video, which isn't the smoothest, but fixes up focusing issues thanks to a lower frame rate. And while recording ultra wide video at night, the Xiaomi still does a decent job at 8K. But the Xiaomi gets even dimmer when dropping to 4K ultra wide video. I'll be keeping the frame rates as low as possible for night videos on all devices since this seems to be the sweet spot. And when it comes to ultra wide, the Samsung comes out the brightest and the iPhone controls light the best. The Xiaomi is the only one with a night video mode option, which is limited to the main camera, but the Huawei actually comes out brighter and looks the best across the board. The iPhone once again controls light the best here. The Xiaomi and Samsung are again the only ones that can shoot 8K video with their mains. And while the Samsung is brighter, the Xiaomi packs in more detail and controls light slightly better. Not to mention the Xiaomi is the only one that can shoot 8K video with its telephoto sensor and it looks more than decent even at night. And this time brightens up when set to 4K, but the iPhone and Huawei are even brighter. However, the Huawei struggles with light noise and grain, leaving the Samsung with the slight edge. Recording 4K telephoto video of me at night has the Huawei come out a tad too polished and while the Xiaomi is quite grainy, it's still ahead of the Samsung and iPhone. And it's a similar situation when it comes to recording portrait video with their telephotos at night. But when recording main portrait video, the Huawei takes the win in terms of color accuracy. And the same thing can be said when disabling portrait modes and using their main cameras. Moving on to night photos, the Huawei looks great but struggles with light noise while the Samsung comes out the most balanced. And when taking a portrait shot using their mains at night, the Samsung once again looks the best overall but the Xiaomi isn't far off. However, when taking a portrait shot using their telephoto camera, cameras, the Huawei is outright incredible. The Xiaomi is once again not far off and the Samsung and iPhone are very questionable. But with portrait mode disabled, the Samsung and iPhone clean up their act, especially the Samsung which arguably has the most balance here with the Xiaomi looking pretty similar. The Huawei again looks fantastic but battles with tonal range here. Taking a telephoto shot of an object at night has the Huawei coming out too warm and the Xiaomi looking the best overall. However, taking the same photo but using their mains has me leaning more toward the Samsung in terms of color accuracy and detail. Taking a shot of a scene using the main cameras has the Huawei looking amazing, but again, a tad too warm for my liking. The Samsung and Xiaomi control light the best here, but the Xiaomi looks better overall due to its sheer amount of detail. This next shot once again shows how well the Xiaomi and Samsung control light with the Xiaomi taking the lead here in terms of detail. It's just a pity the Huawei suffers from too much warmth due to that RYYB color filter because other otherwise it would probably be my favorite. And in this shot, the warmth is still evident, but not quite as bad. Not to mention the Huawei handles light the worst, but the iPhone isn't much better. The Samsung and Xiaomi once again reign supreme here with my vote going toward the Xiaomi, thanks to great contrast, especially when looking at those back buildings when compared to the Samsung. The Xiaomi also comes out the most balanced when taking an ultra wide photo at night and offers fantastic dynamic range and color accuracy. And the same can be said when taking a main photo at night. I mean, look at how well it handles the lights in those background buildings compared to the rest of the devices. This pick was also in my poll on my YouTube community page and most of you voted for option B, which is once again the Huawei. And as much as I agree with this, since it packs in an insane amount of detail, it's still a bit too warm, though not quite as warm as the snaps we took earlier. My biggest issue with it though is the bad light handling of those background buildings. Using their mains to take a two times zoomed photo of the same scene has the Huawei slightly fix up its warmth and light handling and even though the Xiaomi handles light better here, I have to give this one to the Huawei due to its crazy amount of detail. Switching over to their telephotos for optical zoom, the Huawei almost has the opposite effect. It's now too cool instead of too warm and drastically fixes light noise handling. It also packs in the most detail but Samsung takes the lead here due to overall balance and incredible light handling. At 5 times zoom, again the Xiaomi switches over to its periscope sensor for an optically zoomed shot and while it does a superb job with its background, the Samsung does a better job with its foreground. 10 times zoom is when the Samsung kicks in its periscope for a 10 times optical zoom, but just like the pics that we took in daylight, the Xiaomi actually does a better job with its 10 times in sensor lossless zoom. I mean look at that detail in the second floor restaurant. 
France. 15 times is the maximum for the iPhone and it is for sure the worst here. The Samsung looks great but has a bit too much noise grain, leaving the Xiaomi as the champ in the shot. At 30 times zoom, the Xiaomi becomes too filled with grain and the Samsung polishes up its act, but I'm leaning more toward the Xiaomi again as it's the only one which doesn't completely blow up the restaurant sign toward the bottom of the image. It's a similar situation at 50 times zoom, but it's clear that the Samsung is a step ahead here and the Samsung outshines the rest at 100 times zoom as well, but this is where it caps off. Leaving the Xiaomi as the only one that can reach 120 times zoom and strangely enough, it looks even better than it did at 100 times zoom. Taking ultra wide selfies at night leaves the Samsung as the clear winner and the same can be said for ultra wide portrait shots at night, but it does completely change tonal range when the flash is enabled. Setting them all to 1x at night once again has the Samsung come out on top and things are similar with portrait mode enabled too. At one times portrait mode with the flash on, the Samsung once again changes up its tonal range but still looks arguably the best. Though I must say the Xiaomi fixes up a lot of issues when the flash is enabled. None of them are great at taking selfie portrait videos at night but if I had to choose one I'd probably go with the Xiaomi as it comes out the cleanest of the lot. I thought we'd end things the same way we started so this is what selfie video looks like on all four devices at night. Let me know your thoughts on their video quality as well as microphone quality when recording with the selfie cameras in the comment section down below. So now it's time to get to the results based on my personal and professional opinion. And since our opinions may differ, be sure to let me know if you agree with my findings. I feel that Xiaomi have seriously stepped up their game this year with the 13 Ultra in terms of flexibility, especially when it comes to zoom shots with its telephoto and periscope sensors, whether it being a close up zoom shot of a subject or a long distance zoom shot all the way up to 120 times levels. It also takes incredible telephoto videos, phenomenal 8K video across all of its sensors, and it also takes superb main shots at night with its massive one inch type sensor. The Huawei P60 Pro is in its own league when it comes to portrait shots of a human subject using its main or telephoto camera. It takes crazy detailed main shots when set to max resolution and does a great job when it comes to hybrid zoom levels during the day. It takes great shots at night too and would probably be my pick if it weren't for so much warmth. The Galaxy S23 Ultra takes arguably the best photos at night, especially when it comes to zooming in with those telephoto sensors, it takes amazing photos during the day too and is most likely the best in terms of stability when recording video. But I feel that overall, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is the most consistent when it comes to day photography, though it tends to trail the pack when taking photos at night. It obviously takes superb videos, but I was most impressed with how well it retains detail when cropping into native resolution images. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did testing out some of the highest ranked smartphones phones in the world. Let me know your thoughts on these results in the comment section down below. This is Technic and I'll catch you in the next one.